Alright guys, welcome back to F1 News, and in the wake of the Australian Grand Prix, a lot of drivers came out and said the speed of the safety car was downright unacceptable and caused a lot of issues with the restarts of the race. The FAA have come out and responded to the drivers, saying their concerns are effectively entirely unfounded. Very much into your thoughts in the comment section below, hit the like button if you enjoy, subscribe if you're new as always, I would greatly appreciate it. Firstly, I want to mention this, of course, Hamilton's kind of history with the Senna family and in Brazil, seems like he might actually be given honorary citizenship of Brazil, which I thought was incredible, honestly, like unless he said, he's waiting for his Brazil and passport so he's been on a rampage the last few days because he's been all over the shop of course from Australia into Malaysia they did that kind of a shoot a little bit ago now straight back to the factory in the UK back on the simulator so um, yeah he's been all over the shop lately definitely these guys all over the world right I'm pretty sure I even saw some footage of the Red Bull guys getting ready to get out to um to Imola already at least uh, while shipping things out over there so they're definitely getting ready to go it's not race week this week but this time next week all the teams will be set up and ready for Imola and of course well will Ferrari be able to continue their run of form into the home race I'm sure the crowd's going to be absolutely electric out there. But then, well, as you can see, the Ferrari in the shot right here slides out of the race at this point. But um, yeah, this was when the drivers were behind the safety car. The big discussion was really after the second safety car, when Leclerc had a very poor restart. He decides to um just into the final corner, puts their pedal to the metal, I suppose, and then goes for it and understeers pretty dramatically out of the penultimate corner to the point where Verstappen thinks, okay, I can get a good run on him here. Then we just back off, get a great line onto the straight. Verstappen was right behind him on the straight, pulled out to the left-hand side, and given the straight line, speed they had in Saudi Arabia. A lot of us expected him to just go sailing past and um, Leclerc would have to fight back with a clearly quicker Ferrari on the day. But in fairness, Leclerc managed to hold him off, interestingly enough, in terms of pure straight line speeds. And, um, you know, basically that was the only time that Leclerc was challenged in the entire race. But arguably a lot of that came down to the fact that the tyres of these cars were not particularly warm behind the safety car. Lots of concerns actually so far this year already about tyre warmth because um, they've changed the rules to some degree with exactly how the um, well it works in the pits, right, with the kind of warmers you can put on the car. I believe they now have a lower temperature than they previously did. We saw at the first race, for example, in Bahrain, when Hamilton came out of the pits on those hard tyres and was just sliding all over the shop, right? The cars were way too cold, weren't warmed up at all for the circuits, and um, that's obviously something the drivers are going to have to deal with. Usually you'll see behind the safety car, the drivers weaving around all over the place, right, left, right, left, right, to try and keep as much as tyre temperature as they can, accelerating, braking, and um, you know, this is possible to a greater degree when the safety car is kind of quick. On the straight, especially this back straight, was going very slow, like um, the drivers are limited effectively to like a 10 car length difference between where the cars are so it gives them some room to play with here in terms of accelerating slowing down this type of stuff but um yeah a lot of the drivers came out and said the Aston Martin safety car especially was just incredibly slow at, at Australia and it affected some of these restarts right this was some of the statements that were made at the time mainly for Max Verstappen but from some of the other drivers as well that we shall look at it was just that there's so little grip because the safety car was driving so slowly Verstappen said in effective defense of the Ferrari driver kind of saying that Leclerc when he understood kind of going into the the back straight after with the restart after the second safety car he was like well it wasn't really Leclerc's fault it was more of the fact that he just didn't have the grip because the tires weren't warm enough because it'd been chugging along behind this incredibly slow safety car it was like a turtle unbelievable with that car to drive 140 kilometers an hour is very slow of course on the back straight where that was not even a damaged car anymore I don't understand why we have to drive so slowly we have to investigate for sure the Mercedes kind of when that's been out um, I think the first couple of races was the Mercedes safety car now for this race it was the Aston Martin safety car but um yeah the Mercedes was definitely fine faster, seemingly because of the extra aero, but obviously in a straight line, you'd thought there wouldn't be too much difference between the cars. Some further details on what was said initially after the race, the Aston Martin is just really slow, it definitely needs more grip, because our tyres were stone cold. We went into the last corner, I could see Charles understeering, so I'm like, okay, I'll back off a little bit and get a better line, but it's pretty terrible the way we're driving behind the safety car at the moment. The Mercedes is said to have 730 brake horsepower, adjustable suspension, number of track focus features, top speed of over 200 mph, of course at way faster than whatever the 100 mph was that the Aston Martin safety car was doing. Of course, it can go quicker than that, though, as the FIA are just about to explain. And um, even though, well, Bert Mylander said about the new Mercedes safety car that it's actually a thoroughbred race car and very quick indeed. So the drivers didn't really complain about the safety car speeds from the first couple of races, but this one they most certainly did behind the Aston Martin. I'm pretty sure George Russell even goes on to say here, or like, um, well, I'll share the clip from the press conference where Leclerc and George Russell are talking about it and getting frustrated about the fact that they believe that this, uh, well, Aston Martin car is like five seconds a lap slower than the Mercedes one and just wait too slow. And Leclerc joking about the fact that a Ferrari safety car would, uh, you know, get to the top of the pecking order. I don't think there was anything more that he could give, so I, I didn't want to push too much pressure. Um, and uh, and yeah, it's, it's the way it is, but uh, yeah, for sure, with the cars that we have now, it's, it's very difficult to keep the temperatures in the tyres uh, behind the safety car. We don't have that issue with the uh, Mercedes-AMG safety car. <laughs> On a serious note, the Mercedes-AMG is like five seconds a lap quicker than the Aston Martin safety car. 
which is pretty substantial. We need to put a Ferrari so it's then five seconds quicker <laughs> oh, than the Mercedes. Sure. <laughs> let's see, let's see. Maybe that's what they need to do, right? To kind of do a drag race or like a one lap sprint effectively at the start of every weekend between the Aston Martin, the Mercedes, whatever other safety cars, and the winner gets to actually be the safety car for the race. But the FAA came out and made a statement on this, right? Kind of interesting in a way that's like, you know, obviously some other issues they haven't been too eager to respond to. But this one they get back within just a few days and they say the following FIA statement on the F1 safety car. Some images here of the Aston Martin one that was used in Australia and the Mercedes one used at the first couple of races. But this is what they have to say in light of recent comments regarding the pace of the FAA Formula 1 safety car. The FAA would like to reiterate that the primary function of the safety car is, of course, not outright speed, but safety of the drivers, marshals, and officials. The safety car procedures take into account multiple objectives, depending on the incident in question, including the requirement to bunch up the field, negotiate incident recovery or debris on track in a safe manner, and adjust the pace depending on recovery activities that may be ongoing in a different part of the track. So, effectively saying, the reason why they were going slow on the straight was to make sure the field was bunched up, and also to make sure that um, the field was not going past an area where, like, uh, well, debris was being dealt with on the other side of the track. I think it was Vettel's incident was the second safety car that they obviously had to deal with, right? So I guess the safety car going deliberately slower is not like it was uh, going to its potential, but of course, um, there's always going to be friction there, right? Between the drivers wanting the safety car to go as quickly as is possible, and the FIA saying, okay, maybe we need to slow it down a little bit in these sectors just to make sure that we can clear the track, right? So they're basically saying, look, it's about safety at the end of the day, but of course, uh, well, there's other elements at play here, because if all of a sudden the safety car is going too slow, and that uh, the tyres can't get warm enough as a result on the Formula 1 cars, then it's more likely there's going to be more incidents as a result, right, with drivers losing control. So it's definitely a battle there, because um, you don't want the safety car to then in, kind of inherently cause more issues, because the cars are oversteering, understeering, whatever, because the tyres aren't warm enough and there isn't the grip. The speed of the safety car is therefore generally dictated by race control and not limited to the capabilities of the safety cars, which are bespoke high-performance vehicles prepared by two of the world's top manufacturers, equipped to deal with changeable crack conditions at all times, and driven by a hugely experienced and capable driver, and co-driver. It's kind of interesting, right? They're not uh, kind of, a, well, they don't want to address the statement that the Mercedes is quicker than the Aston Martin. However true that may or may not be, probably is true just looking at the two. But, um, you know, still the drivers, they didn't really want to comment on the idea that Mercedes is quicker than the Aston. And then uh, the final thing that was said, the impact of speed on the safety car and the performance of cars following is a secondary consideration. Like, um, well, safety comes first, then the speed of the following cars and the ability to keep the tyres warm is a secondary consideration, as the impact is equal amongst all competitors who, as always has been the case, are responsible for driving in a safe manner at all times according to the conditions of their car and the circuit. Shouldn't have cut off the G there, but it's okay. So interesting statement, right? Come out and effectively clapping back at what the drivers had to say about the safety car being going too slow. But, um, you know, it has got to be said, there is other issues regarding the safety car, right, that uh, the drivers, I'm sure, had. Of course, we saw this image, right, um, of when, well, it was Mick Schumacher almost went flying into the back of, I believe it was Yuki Tsunoda, because then um, behind the safety car, like, um, he was kind of doing the start-stop type thing with the braking to try and keep the brake temperatures high and the tyre temperatures high as well, and almost went into the back of him, right? And that's kind of a, one of the things this can cause when um, the, when the safety car is going slower than expected, you get potential problems like this. So they're going to have to look into this one. WTF1 say right here in their article in their decision, they've mentioned that it's clear the speed and braking capabilities of F1 cars, especially while trying to maintain required temperatures in tyres and brakes, are in tension with the 10 car length separation behind the safety car traditionally specified in the regulations. So the idea is, I'm pretty sure if you're behind the safety car, you have to be within 10 car length of the car in front. That's kind of the rules. If you drop any further back than that, then it kind of defeats the purpose of bunching up the field, but um, even that 10 car length at times can be a little bit sketchy. This needs to be a point of emphasis in future driver meetings to ensure drivers collectively agree on how to best make this, well, address this challenge before an unfortunate incident occurs, as it almost did, honestly, to Australia. So lots of things to talk about really on the safety car front, but um, yeah, the drivers maybe have a point, but the FAA have said, look, safety comes first, but of course, um, if the case safety car is going too slow, then there's also additional safety implications that come as a result of that one. So maybe just have the Mercedes safety car every race, because that seems to be kind of quicker, to be honest. Wanted to mention a couple of things about Haas, actually, because, of course, they didn't have the greatest time in Australia at all. In interestingly enough, their only non-point finish of the season so far, which is quite a statement to make after last year, right, where they had, like, no points finishes at all. And, of course, this, so this year so far, they'd finished in the points every single race, apart from here in Australia. So what exactly went wrong here? It's kind of interesting in the way that it almost seemed like McLaren and Haas swapped places in terms of their setup for this race. Maybe not a track that suits them extremely well, but uh, we'll see if they bounce back, of course. This also is quite interesting because there's this kind of 
ongoing drama really between Hassan and Yuel Kali, the effectively Russian backed sponsor that the team had. They of course separated from them. I believe the situation is there's like a 20 million thing going on, 12 million of which have has come from Yuel Kali all the way to Hass already. Yuel Kali want that back from them. Now um, Hassan basically said, look, we're not paying you that 12 million back, unlucky lads. Now um, they actually want additional money because I believe there's another 8 million that was being used to fund uh, Nikita Mazepin. And um, of course he's now long gone. Now um, it seems like Hass actually want that money instead. So my expectation is that Hass aren't going to pay the money back to Yuel Kali. Yuel Kali aren't going to pay that additional 8 million to Hass. And they're probably going to have to call it a truce at the end of the day. But both sides are trying to reclaim all the money that they possibly can do. At least, um, at least from the public facing perspective, they probably realise behind the scenes it's unlikely to go down. But in fairness, the car looks a lot better without that sponsorship, to be honest. It's, um, it's a nicer livery, in my opinion. And also, um, the, well, the, the team has a much greater reputation already by uh, getting rid of that stuff. So I think it's really great all around. But I suppose we'll see if there's any legal battles that kind of result from all this type of stuff. A couple of things just to be finished out with. Thought this is kind of interesting, actually. Trophies with Williams and Mercedes. Only three drivers to take podiums with both teams. Of course, George Russell had one last year at Spa. Kind of an interesting race where that really counts the podium. Is another question mark, but he gets one, of course, at Williams. Now gets one at Mercedes. These are the other two drivers to do that. Nico Rosberg in the Williams, two podiums there. 55 for Mercedes. And Valtteri Bossas, nine podiums with Williams. 58 for Mercedes. Does make you wonder, right? Lewis Hamilton, people call this guy the greatest of all time. But, uh, you know, where is podiums with Williams, right? It's, you know, how can we call him the GOAT if he's not picking up podiums with Williams? And just to finish up with these, I think these are always pretty controversial, to be honest, these power rankings for the race. But uh, this is what they come up with here, the Formula 1 side. Not really sure how they decide this, to be honest. Like, obviously, Charles Leclerc gets a 10, I guess, for just dominating the race from start to finish. But, um, you know, look, you obviously have the best car on the day, so there is that as well. Alexander Albon, number two, thought that was fantastic. Arguably could have been number one with what he pulled off with those higher tyres from start to finish. This is what I don't really understand, though. That, like, um, we've got Lando Norris here at third, and we've got Daniel Ricciardo at ninth, even though, like, um, they basically had no difference at all in terms of where they were in the race. Yes, Norris finished slightly ahead of Ricardo, but Daniel probably could have had him towards the end if he hadn't been told by the team to stay back because they were managing kind of engine temperatures, this type of stuff. Same really between, um, of course, it's very close here with the 8.2s between like Russell and Hamilton. But like, yes, Russell finished ahead of Hamilton, but like, um, you know, of course, Russell got lucky with the, the safety car timing in the pit stop. And I think, um, of course, he saved about, what, 10 seconds or whatever on that pit stop. And Lewis obviously finished the race only about two seconds behind. So if anything, considering that into play and the fact that it seemed like Hamilton might have had him if it wasn't been for again he kind of got told by the team slow down manage the PU temperatures then um, Hamilton might have well overtake him again right so it doesn't make you wonder how they even come up with this stuff to be perfectly honest but it's always going to be impossible to do a good rankings like this but very much in tweeting your thoughts and all this stuff in the comment section below hit the like button if you enjoyed subscribe if you're new as always take care of yourselves and I will see you next time